Star when I got my evening coffee, and um, I was sharing about the Trees Forever tree adoption because she was talking about getting a tree. I was like, conveniently, that's in our meeting tonight. <laughs> Obviously, so my heart is a little broken, but that's okay. I'm waiting for her to tell me we're ready. You do it, hello. Yes. She has this thing all cool and stuff. She's got all the technology. Songs and all this stuff before we log on to it. She's Where's my TV? <laughs> Can I lift it up? I got the TV at my house. Oh. You didn't tell me I needed to. I got it. I can do that. I think, yeah, I have it at home. I have several. You took it. Oh, I had to fix it. Remember? Yeah, the legs were working. Fix it. Yeah. So I got fixed. You said keep it. I guess I took that a little too literal. All right, let's roll. <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming now tonight. We have exciting things to talk about this evening. I hope somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we'll start our meeting now tonight with our charger report. We will have some expenses coming up, but not yet, but these will be reimbursed, so we still have about 3000 to play with. Uh, she's going to tell you about the postcards. That'll be about $600, and our egg hunt, probably about $600. I guess it would be. So, but right now we have 3000 in the bank. <laughs> Okay, any so questions? <laughs> any oh, questions Andy about our budget? That's money from my reach. Yeah, the two fifty. <laughs> We're still working on that. Okay. Thank you very much, Amy. And our Cedar Rapids P D report, Lieutenant Walsh. Yep. Uh, overall Cleveland neighborhood is uh, doing a great job. Really you guys are well below the five year average of crime occurring in the neighborhood. The big thing and what's good is uh, there haven't been any burglaries reported so far this year in the, in the, the Cleveland area, which is uh, which is really good. That's helped bring those numbers down. So um, from the news from the police department, uh, we're in the final stages of our hiring process. Uh, we're at like 14 or 15 remaining for background checks. Those are um, being done uh, right now and then they will uh, um, the packets are due by Friday. They'll be turned in and then uh, reviewed by the training division and civil service just to, for anything issues from that. Uh, theft from vehicle, just to make sure you're not leaving anything in vehicles that people can see. Don't leave keys in there, don't leave any valuables or anything like that that would entice anyone to want to break into the car. And then we put something out a couple of weeks ago, but there's kind of a scam going on where we've had a couple reports of um, uh, people having their information cards stolen while they're grocery shopping. People will leave their uh, purses um, sitting on the uh, front portion of a grocery cart. Someone will come up, kind of distract them with small talk, and then someone else is getting in there and taking credit cards, you know, a Sam's Club card. Costco card and then go in and use it right away. So um, just just a couple things, just be sure to be aware of your surroundings, be sure to secure your wallet or, or purse when you have that stuff sitting in a um, grocery cart and uh, report suspicious activity to the store. If you think there is something going on, um, not to be rude, but maybe don't talk to strangers if they're coming up and asking you just odd questions, kind of pick up on that kind of stuff. And, um, don't engage them in conversation because something could be going on and then um, obviously give us a call if there's uh, 
for you if you've been the victim of, of theft potentially or anything like that? Every time you go to the gas station, <laughs> I'll be calling you. I can't do much about that. But. Uh, they rob me every time. <laughs> that's, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Lieutenant? Can I ask the, the big one? What's going on with the boss? I have no idea. Oh, way above my level of management. And I have no idea. I got it. Ask people on the street to find out these things. I don't understand. No, I, you know, I don't understand. I'll let an 80 year old guy come in and be the head of our armed forces, but a 65 year old can't run my local police department after all those years. Yeah. Like I said, Not a lot of logic to that. Yeah. Tell him we support him. I'm yeah. sure you see him. No, I haven't seen him. Well, if you do, tell yeah. him that we support him and no, I believe in him. No, I'm. Regardless, whatever happens, I'm I'm a fan of Chief German, and um, he's done a lot for my career, and I appreciate everything he's done for the department. So, yep. John, we haven't forgot him. We just haven't been able to find him. Yeah. So, thank you. Yep. And now from Chief Smith, how's everything in the? Tell me about this semi sitting on top of a car down in your fire training area. Um. I don't know, I have the complete details on that, but it's, uh, we are doing, we, we uh, have been and will be doing some training on um, extrication from heavy vehicles. So that's part of that, just to utilize, to get the crews um, used to utilizing and lifting, um, you know, heavy vehicles off of those cars. I, I think that's training this week. I can't, I, I, I know that it was happening. I can't, I can't remember, I don't think it was last week because our training division was all on the spring break. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Um, so I believe it's this week or next week. So yeah, just continue training and pressing the, you know, the, the pressing the skills of the crews. Well, the car down, down with all the cops talking about your job, life training. Yep. But you were doing distraction from rollovers kind of thing. Yep. We do, uh, and and it, it's hit and miss. Um, you know, of course, you know, in the winter can't do much of that training. Once it turns nice, you know, it can hit it throughout. Uh, throughout the year, or throughout the summer, spring, summer, into fall, and just uh, do what we can with, with that type of stuff. So, absolutely. What else is going on in our fire world? Oh, um, well, uh, that caught the tail end of, I guess, PD's hiring process. We are starting our hiring process, or I'm sorry, we got one or two things going at once. Um, we have made job offers out to we have made job offers out to eight personnel, um, seven accepted, one had taken a job somewhere else. So we'll be hiring seven to start May 1st, um, we'll do an eight week academy, and then they will be on shift. And then we will start the hiring process right again this summer, kind of probably June, July, I frame we'll start taking applications. Um, so we'll have a number of retirements later this year, and we'll get into the next year as well. So um, our department kind of goes in cycles. We have in the history big classes, small classes, and so we're kind of in one of those where we seem to be replacing a lot of people. <laughs> well, there are, like you say, there are so, times in there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the, the big reminder is that uh, well, over the last weekend, weekend before last, uh, time change. If you have any, haven't changed the batteries or your smoke detectors, unless you have a 10 year battery. Uh, please do that. I know Nicole's putting out the postcard about reminder of CO detectors as well. So keep an eye on those if you have uh, um, battery powered CO detectors as well. Um, the other thing with that, with uh, with detectors, if you're getting to the 10 year lifespan, pull them down, chuck them, and replace them. Whether they're hardwired or whether they're battery operated. Um, final thing just to catch up on is we are uh, doing the tabletop exercise for disaster scenario. So um, hopefully I'm not jinxing us. Working through some wood around here now. Um, it seems like every time we train on something, something happens. So we're, we're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Very unlucky. I know, I know. And also <laughs> ideal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, get that information right away. Yeah. Not, not enough for our crews to go through uh, like a, like a once-in-a-career, once-in-a-ten-year training session, and lo and behold, that afternoon or the shift later, they have that scenario. <laughs> it's crazy. So hopefully that will work. Um, What's that cost to get that to happen? 
Did you get that to happen? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, nothing. Something should be making money on the way that it happens. You think something was <laughs> budgetary anyway. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we, uh, um, coming out of the after action review from the Duray show, um, we have a consulting firm in doing a citywide tabletop exercise. It's completely internal. You'll probably see something next week in the news about it. We're inviting the, the news just to come observe. Um, and kind of do a piece on them, that type of stuff. It's just simply create a disaster and do a tabletop exercise just to just to go through the emotions and exercise the management portion of managing a disaster. So we got that going on as well. Uh, other than that, I'm just I'm glad it's finally getting warm out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Spring. spring for a while. Today is officially the first day of yes. spring. Yes. Four thirty-five. Yeah. I had an alarm on my clock at work. <laughs> Today's my twenty-fourth wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Fun. Congratulations. Did Kathy let you come to the meeting? Oh yeah. I was gonna take her out to eat. She said, Let's just stay home tonight over this weekend. It's just nice to be home this time of night in your jammies to watch your shows. So but anyway, yeah, twenty-four years out. One question for you, Chief. Mm -hmm. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you planning for this retirement? Yeah, I, <laughs> I want to know how long I have him. Oh, <laughs> you got me for a while. I'm not. I'm not even eligible for another 15 months. So. Oh, for another 15 months. I'm eligible. Eligible. Don't you have college kids to get through school first? Uh, my, my kids are out of college oh, okay. as of now, but I will, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, so you can't get rid of me that easy. I don't, don't want to get rid of you. I, just, okay. Okay. I, I like things to be simple and simple. I like I to know the people that I'm dealing with uh -huh. and have a relationship, and when things change, it yeah. upsets my world. And uh -huh. I like to know that you're a solid piece of foundation I can stand on. For a little while. Yeah. I'm, I'm only 50. There we yeah, are. Yes, yes, I got some time. I've got some time left. And only two, one younger than you in here. Maybe one or two, <laughs> three. What? You're in your 40s. No, oh, I'll be 52 coming up. Oh. I'm, uh, I have three years and six months, and my. You're years. not counting on me. Holy. I'm going to give him the answer I gave earlier. I've yeah. got 15 months and two weeks. So. <laughs> oh, no. That's eligible. I've heard from That's... many people once you're eligible, it is, it is way easier to come into work. Yeah. <laughs> That's my magic. No, I want to get to that stage, and then every day after that, kind of just be. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. nice to me because I don't You're have to. You're just rubbing it in. I got like 35 years of <laughs> <laughs> okay, once you get here, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know when it's time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. After you've met the board requirements, then it's your decision. Yep, that's right. Anyway. So, no, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, we, there's always a question when you first start on a new job. There's always a rumor going around can he do it? Is he qualified? Does he have what it takes to do? And, uh, Knowing when you came in and knowing you, I'm very impressed with what you just do down there and what you do as a leadership with the fire department and your, not only the training, but your relationship with the city and the people in the city is phenomenal. And I'm so happy to have you as our chief. It's well, really great. I appreciate great. it very much, but I will say that it takes the entire team to do that. So. Uh, Oh, certainly. With, uh, but somebody has to be the floor general. Italian chiefs and three crews. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're making you look good. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a lot of work because that's pretty hard. <laughs> but just want you to know that it doesn't go unnoticed. Well, thank you. Appreciate so that. Very much. I speak highly of you whenever I do because I never know when I'm going to need you. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. A monthly program this year, like we have in past years, about how different, maybe say there were different topics. Oh, the weather advisory, like the, uh, like the uh, like the pact. 
Yes. We're talking the back stuff. Neighborhood pack, the preparedness. Um, we had to put some stuff out. I, let me check with our PIO. Yeah, I'm not it sure. It was once a month. Yep. Yeah. Like some, sometimes it was safety. Or yep. So it'd be like water safety in the spring. It'd be like uh, holiday safety at Christmas time. Tornadoes, all that. Yeah. 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 Let me. It wasn't all necessarily safety. Uh, let me. Uh, we. Safety and awareness kind of thing. Yep, yeah, used to send that stuff out, but I don't know if the website's been updated. Let me take a look. It's, it's one of those where I, I, I know um, in, in talking to the PIO, we were, he had kind of pre prepared ahead for a few months, so it kind of might fall off the radar, but that, that's something we need to definitely shore up again. So I'll yeah. check in on that. It's at the fire station open to the public. Oh, you you're talking open house? You're talking, um, that was when. Um, Julie Bofelka was our public uh, public education person. It was before COVID, and it would be a once a month. Um, yes. Um, right now, our uh, um, our public education specialist actually will be going on maternity leave, so we'll have a part time one in there. That's something we may start up in the future, but we don't have any plans in, in the near term anyway. So, kind of with COVID, it's kind of you know everything kind of shut down. Now it's kind of reviving the. The stuff, you know, you pick the little hanging fruit kind of built from there. And we had, we've had a couple changeovers in that position. And okay, so we've got a fantastic person in there now. But uh, unfortunately, she'll, well, fortunately for her, she'll be taking 12 weeks of uh, maternity leave. Yay. So <laughs> go, Sydney. Yes, yes. And she's fantastic. Um, but yeah, so um, that's something potentially in the future, but, but not really. But the good point to check on the pack and stuff and just. Anything else for the chief? If not, thank you, sir. Uh, just not here at the moment. Or Ashley. I did get Ashley sent me a text message that she wanted um, the she wanted to share the city's community action community climate action plan is seeking artists for a rain art project. Artists will design temporary creations on sidewalks with environmentally friendly rain activated invisible spray. The deadline for artist applications is set for April 2nd. Um, I did put the information on the CANA website this morning, so that's on there. And then she also said the city is still seeking applications for current and upcoming vacancies on many city of Cedar Rapids boards, commissions, and advisory committees. Applications are due for that April 30th. Um, I actually, before she even mentioned this, I put that in our last email blast, and then I'll put that again in tonight's email blast. But those, are, again, it's, it's the end of April that those are due. So we still, there's still plenty of time for that. And the Parks Department is still looking for help this summer. Oh, Major yes, yes. A lot. So. Yeah. Oh, and the invisible art is pretty cool. So they actually spray paint. I don't know exactly how they do it. They paint onto sidewalks. And then it's invisible until it rains, and then when it rains, you can see the image. Oh, cool! Yeah. That's nice. Then how long does it last? It's a temporary art piece. I think it lasts maybe a year at most. Oh, even a year. Yeah. Like you said, we're doing work. Well, the greater rain we've had in the last couple of years, we won't see very often. Oh well, that's not very. Oh, hiring? No, you won't get that hiring. Sorry. Hiring. I agree. Thank you. It's okay. She's fast. Are you good to okay, go? Okay, yep, I'm good. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All righty. What do you have to offer us tonight, oh great one? I Come just on. am here to observe. Come on, no. Got nothing? I mean, okay, I'll tell you what I told or I'll tell them what I told you. This is Nancy. Um, hi, <laughs> I'm a new planner for the city of Cedar Rapids. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the projects that I'm pretty excited about is we're doing a feasibility study. So we're trying to figure out if it's feasible to have an intergenerational center in Cedar Rapids, which would include everything from a senior center to a sports complex facility. And um, so we're gonna be sending out surveys and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll connect with you guys when the survey comes out. You, they just do a feasibility. They haven't thought about location or nothing uh, at all. It's just a feasibility study. If feasible, where could it potentially be? 
Good, good. Well, I've got um, some yearly stats so far. We've had 223 founded uh, nuisance activity calls. Um, we've received 10 nuisance abatement plans, which is um, good. Last year we received 19 for the whole year. Uh, some of the primary um, nuisance calls we've had recently have been uh, for disturbing the peace and barking dogs. So if you're hearing barking dogs or loud music in the neighborhood, make sure that you call dispatch before it becomes a real big problem for you so that it can be documented appropriately. Um, for barking dogs um, and disturbing the peace in general, it takes three founded calls for service for that property to become a nuisance. So you wait all summer and don't start documenting it the appropriate way with calling dispatch, it you know, can't get resolved as quickly. Um, other than that, that's about it. Well, driving around our neighborhood and seeing uh, what's been going on as far as this area on there, we really see that people in this neighborhood are already cleaning up after the snow has melted and I'm seeing a lot of people out in their yards getting things ready for the spring and uh, really do not see any nuisances. Uh, as far as property yeah. and storage and things like, like that, that. Yeah. 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 So uh, it's just nice to say that we don't have that big of a problem here that uh, we're too worried about uh, those things. But here again, we've got enough people that keep on top of it and let them know when something goes on. It's also important to know that it doesn't necessarily have to be a rental property. It can be owner-occupied or a commercial property as well. Sure. They're all treated the same. Does anybody know about the 8th Avenue from 15th down to Rockford Grove? Are they going to be resurfacing that this year? Start that this year? Anybody know about that? That'd be a good question for Jeff. We can ask Jeff. Yeah, Jeff would know. Okay. We have several people wanting to know when they're going to get that. Wait, so 8th Avenue, down. where is it that you want to ask about? 15th Street down oh. to Rockford Road. Down by the, ter the tennis courts. That's a rough, rough road down there. It's ready to be redone. They got both ends done now, and hopefully they'll do the middle. So. Anybody have anything? Matt, anybody on? Okay, and then we will move on to our community safety and wellness fair. We usually have it in July. I have to get a meeting with Susan Johnson from the church here, who's to uh, the head of it. We kind of took it over last year because she was very and uh, was pretty swamped with the. Uh, to French recovery or rescue and so we did but we need to get her back in on on board and doing so we will get with her we'll find them time for a meeting but Tuesday, well we have one tentatively scheduled for next Tuesday at six we do yeah good to know thank you, you. probably missed the email today that's okay I'll let it slide <laughs> I was out with my wife all day Tuesday at six Yep, Tuesday the 20th is here, 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 upstairs, because there's already something going on down here. We don't have a date for the safety fair yet. No, no, no. no. We always That's try to look and see what else is happening in Cedar Rapids first, yeah. and then like what fairs we'll be competing with and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Second, the second weekend is usually a pretty good weekend for us to have it. That gives us about three to four weeks to before the national night out. The last time we had it, it was only two weeks before the National Night Out, and it overwhelmed us. So we had moved that over to Hillside Church that year. But we we're going to be back on board this year because Hillside wants to come over and work with us. So we we're going to have it there and, and bringing them on board. And that's very, uh, very exciting for us to have another group that's interesting to come in and participating in the park with us and co-sponsor some of the events. We can get some more events for kids out into the park. And that speaks of what we've been offering because they're coming to us and want to be a part of it. So whatever we're doing, we're doing it with the right attitude. 
and getting the right things. So we will, after that meeting, we'll have more information at the next meeting on it. And uh, we're hoping to change a few things around, but keep a lot of few, a few of the things too. So when I talked to uh, the name of Jessica English, she was here last month. You had probably remember seeing her, but she wants to partner with us. They have a big grill and evidently I have this life-size bowl they bring out and you can get pictures sitting on the bowl or standing next to the bowl. Yeah, they've been down and cooked for, for us a lot at the police department. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. come down during her husband's a big time. Yeah. Uh, he loves to cook on his yeah. big grill. Yeah. So he's very good at it. So yeah. I'm all good with that. So anyway, so we're looking forward to having them come on board and, and work with us also and putting up a station or two and uh, help us to manage it with that. We're also talking about, and Amy will talk about that with the egg hunt. But they want to come on board with us on that too. So anyway. So with that said, we'll go on to our quarterly postcard campaign from Nicole. Yeah, sorry, this is delayed. Um, I also didn't realize I was gonna print full page, so you guys just get to see the full page version. We pass one down to Denise. Mm -hmm. I only printed three copies, so you guys are gonna have to share. Did you get Nicole to your back for Mike? Mm -hmm. I did not. Okay. And, and he was, we were tied up basically all day. Oh yeah, so. no, it's fine. Oh. I don't need to send it to them till the end of the month. Okay. So. The, uh, we have time. Um, the portable on there looks really good. I would just say if um, I'm okay with it, it doesn't matter to me whether our local one's on there or not. If you want to put it on there, just work with Mike to get the official the proper, one. The, yeah, the proper yeah. file and all yeah. that type of stuff. So okay, cool. Yeah, but otherwise, the, what you put for the for the detectors and stuff that looks good. Okay, perfect. So these are the quarterly postcards. We're trying to hit a different topic each quarter of the calendar year, not not the city like fiscal year. Um, this is gonna be the five by seven. Um, it will be color front, black and white back. Um, it's hard because we're trying to share so much information, but I'm trying to keep it legible. <laughs> so um, any wordage that you think is too long or you think something else is important to add, I'll do my best to add it, but that's pretty much the maximum space we have. Um, Trees Forever was very interested in partnering with us on this one. They'd also be interested again in the fall if we do some other type of home or property specific um, concept. I told them that's not in the plan right now, but they were still happy to have the um, tr ad tree adoption event included. Um, and then obviously Cedar Rapids Fire on there about carbon monoxide detectors. And then just a couple other facts that were, um, I use my search engine optimization marketing skills to figure out what the most common things are right now. Um, and those are like the top topics that people are searching for and trying to seek information on within Eastern Iowa-ish area. Um, so providing that information to neighbors, I think is gonna be sufficient. Um, obviously we can add as much information as we want to the actual CANA website. Now, of course we're sending this because there are neighbors that don't have internet access. So reminding them that we're still here i think is great and just this little hey check your mailbox we provided you a little bit of information is just a little nudge for them to hopefully seek information on what we're doing so um definitely a new approach but we have the money so why not spend it right so any way we can reach neighbors is great so if you have any edits or anything speak now or forever hold your peace so i already have some verbiage i need to change from trees forever but Excuse me. Yeah. Don't they have to register in advance for the tree? We do. That's what John wanted me to change. So I, the final copy that he sent me has changed since I printed that at 3 o'clock today. So okay. <laughs> it has, I think, April 28th is the deadline for the trees. So he had me include that and some other phrasing he wanted on there. So John's a really great person. So I like working They're with looking for tree captains. Mm -hmm. Tree keepers, yes. Mm -hmm. I, tree captain is different than tree keeper in their world. Oh, okay. Well, I told John, I said, uh, or not John, um, Kylie, when I was talking to him at the symposium, I said, anytime you guys have information you want us to share, send it to me in an email because otherwise I could share every single one of your Facebook posts, but then that'll turn into a part-time job. So um, any information that they send us, I usually just put on the website. So. Um, 
the tree capping program is where someone um, Dops, uh, basically takes an area, a neighborhood area, mm -hmm. and uh, they did their first one last year. Happens to be a fellow master gardener. Oh, nice. Um, it's a very, uh, I think it's too big of a job for somebody to want to take on. You, oh, I mean, it's retired. It, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's a lot of work, and you knock on a lot of doors, and people aren't home, so you got to do a lot of repeating. But what you do is you go around, to like, I think she had 150 neighbors or people to contact to see, and then they had a put, and then uh, I think every person that was willing to plant trees in their yard, I think they could get up to three three trees. But it's a lot of coordinating. But they wanted, um, um, they had a deadline to get a tree tapped, and I don't know if they, they wanted to do three this year, I think. It says applications are open March 1st, must be completed by May 1st. And then it says you're only awarded 50 trees. So maybe they reduced the number. Oh, that would be a lot easier than maybe they learned from the. <laughs> maybe from last year. Yeah. I'll just copy and paste this and put it in the minutes. Is that okay? Whatever. Okay. I just don't think, I don't, I don't think we're going to have room to put it on the postcard. That's the. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. I understand. Sorry. Postcards are only like so big. Oh, I thought that was pretty good size. <laughs> that is not the real size. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Check my printer settings. Oh, man. I was excited. I could actually read it. <laughs> okay. And that's all I have. So, unless anybody has other edits or things they want me to take off or add, we're just going to get that proofread one more time and then send it off to print. So. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. All right, cool. That was the easiest editing team I've ever had. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Not fair, because no one knows what you're talking about. We're just agreeing with you. <laughs> well, I hope to God if I had a really bad typo on there, somebody would yell. But <laughs> well, they have them in the newspaper all the time, so don't feel bad if you have one. <laughs> okay, Miss Amy, would you like to talk about your Easter egg hunt? Got it off the ground. Um, it will be us and a minimal involvement with the church here. Hillside doesn't want to be involved with the egg hunt. Okay. Possibly the safety fair. I think it's a different story. Okay. Um, we're going to do it different than just throwing the eggs out on a free for all. We've numbered eggs one to twelve, and so the kids have to find eggs one through twelve. Well, we mixed up. Those are already numbered. Um, I'd say 183 sets of 12, so about 2,000 eggs. Wow. <laughs> and so they have to go and find 12, 1 through 12, and then they'll bring it up and we'll have a little baggie for them. So everybody gets the same thing. You know, sometimes kids will get 20 and one, and then you'd love to get three. And our age groups will be, hold on one second here, zero to four, and those just have to get 12 eggs. We're not going to have them. Mom's going to have a hard time keeping them anyway. And then we're going to do it by grades, kindergarten through second, and then third, fourth, and fifth grade. So, um, uh, Nicole and I are worried, working on how many toys and how many candy pieces to get. So we spent some money, but if you go to Oriental Trading, you get some pretty good deals, especially if you keep, it keeps sending you free shipping coupons. So, um, <laughs> So we're working on that. Um, we will get the sign out front on that one. Um, what's the date? Oops. April 8th, the day before Easter. We're saying at 10 o'clock. If it rains, I guess we'll just do it anyway. We'll come up with something. <laughs> Unless it is just tornado and, you know, all hell breaks loose. Um, the eggs start going across the street. We'll probably stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, on their own anyway. And I got a couple things for you, Joel, about George. George about Joel. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and buy. We've asked the church for candy, but they're not agreeing. No, they're not agreeing. But we haven't gotten any in our box out here. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just order assortment of 
thing and everybody will get at least 12 boy candy combination. I don't know how many golden baggies we'll have and I'm not sure what we'll put in the golden baggie, you know, because there's always a golden egg. Well, somebody will get a golden baggie or something. You know. I've never done this, so being in charge, I'm really good. <laughs> I've heard about them, I know about them, but I haven't done the numbers before. So I think it won't take too much. Um, We'll just see. And I think in um, 2020, we voted to spend that $100. And as long as it's $100 or less, like Canada doesn't have to have a vote. So do we plan on spending more than $100 or? Oh, plan was much? needed. Plan was needed. All in favor say aye. Yeah, it's going to be about $600, which is still pretty. I mean, I'm getting all the coupons and the free shipping I can find. So um, that's a rough estimate. Okay, so you need up to a $600 spend for this. I'll say 700 just for good measure. Oh, okay. For well, the minutes. I, I don't know how much, I don't know how much, I mean, the candy itself is only gonna be like a couple, like if you bought just a thousand pieces, it's like still like 200 bucks. Like it's expensive. Let's say, let's say 700, I'm not gonna bit spend to the limit, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so your motion is to spend up to up to seven hundred dollars. Are the churches participating? And uh, a little bit. They, they will agree to some money too. Okay. Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't know how much, but there's some money they will kick in too. I don't think it'll be anywhere near that. I just a ballpark figure. Okay. I'm saving as much as I can. All right, that'll work. Okay. I got some leftover Halloween candy, so if they don't notice. Maybe. <laughs> Is there somebody in the group that wants to say something? We got a free a big bag. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Great. So carries. So this will be our first time, so we'll, we'll either be real triumphant or we'll never do it again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And last that I have on the agenda is their neighborhood cleanup day, which we have picked April 15th from 10 a.m. till 12. So we'll meet at the park and I will get uh, the bag packets from the city. Uh, I don't know if, how many Bring bags they think and I need. Pick up sticks. Pick I don't know, sticks. 50 bags maybe at a max. 50 bags, they come with gloves with them. Oh. Well. Put gloves in the, bag, in the bags. So I'll get 50 of them. Where are you meeting? What? Where are you meeting here? Right over here at the park, at yeah. the pavilion. One of the times, yeah. From 10 to noon. And then you we'll put them. Bags. What? You had bags. I have bags, but I don't have gloves. gloves. So I'll get the new ones with the gloves so everybody has a pair of gloves. Their handy gloves are nice clothes. Okay. You can wear them, but not to church. <laughs> right. Did you do the job? Sure. He did have bags with gloves all yeah. wrapped up. In yep. a... I'm good. Okay. From, good. I'm good. Yeah. From the park through the park. They'll get them out of there. They gave me a whole, uh, I thought were just a few bags, just the bags themselves. So I started counting them, and there's like a couple of hundred bags in this little bitty thing. They're thin and they're green, but there's a lot of them in that little box. But uh, we use we use those for other things too. So we we'll get that on. But anyway, we just want to go around and clean up. Not that our neighborhood is a messy neighborhood by no means, is it? But this just gives them a chance to get out and, and clean up along the streets. We don't go onto people's private property. We just go on the curbs and a couple of feet in where. You know, people tend to throw their garbage out. It only goes so far. But uh, just give us a chance to get together and uh, do something positive for the neighborhood. So, so back up to eggs. We will need some volunteers, though. Okay. Anybody that wants to help us. I don't think it'll take very long. Mad dash, it'll be over a half hour. No. We gotta count eggs a little bit. And I suppose, yeah, there might be a little bit more time involved. If anybody wants to come and volunteer and help. Yeah, okay, thank you, okay. Denise. And Kathy and I'll be over there also. Yeah. With some more here. 
Oh, that's right. Then we'll put it under new other business. Yeah, there you go. Under city services, um, the uh, the garbage and recycling and all that during the year, they always say that they pick the yardies up year round. They're just really throwing it in with the garbage, right? When did they actually start putting the yardie in a separate? I I know for certain that they keep it separate because it goes to the city waste municipal and that's where they let it compost and actually turn into dirt and then yeah. give the dirt away for free. But as for as as for her comment, they have picked my garbage my yardy up and dumped it in with the garbage the, with the garbage a couple of times. Yes, yes they, they have. No, it's so not an ongoing thing. But out in the curb in the winter. So I guess I'm, I got all kinds of yard waste, but I don't want to see it going in the garbage. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we spend so much time, uh, me too, I'm very much so I separate I, I want everything. Combo. So I guess I just want to know when it, when did the yardies, when did the trucks? Okay. Yeah, start using it for compost rather than just yeah. picking up. Is there a time of the year that in the fall when you or in the winter time when you have an, a storm, even a nice storm? Just a good wind and stuff. What's the duration? There's a lot of weak branches that are still up there and they fall. I go out and cut them out. They're dear to get rid of them, but I've had a couple of times, a few times where I've had to go out and cut up a fairly good sized branch that have fallen out of my tree and I put it out for it. And then I see the garbage truck go by and they pick them up and throw them in with the garbage. Not a huge thing, but it does happen, and I have seen it myself. The logic is that they, and I understand why they do it. The logic is they're not going to run a yardy truck all over town. For that time. Be, Especially if people aren't composting as much. Yeah, they don't have yard waste. Sitting out. So all I'm asking is, I'm not complaining in any way. I'm just curious when the yardy trucks really start running. Let me look it up. Yeah, but a lot of that would keep over winter. It would. Or it would smell or anything. Winter. Exactly. I actually don't produce that much, so it just stays in the yardy all winter. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. We can probably, I mean, that's why I know that too. Okay. Anybody else has any other business you would like to talk about? Officially or unofficially? Um, I gave this to George, but the Cedar Rapids Independent Film Festival is April 14th through 16th at Collins Road Theater. So, um, one of my coworkers is the director this year, and he is very, very excited. And so, my company is sponsoring it. So, I told him I would help promote that. So. It's going to be fun. I'll be there. Yeah, just come hang out with me. If you don't want to hang out, watch the movie, just hang out with me. Anything else, kids? Well, recognize that, that my wife and I are lucky enough to get tickets for the Nine We Care Award Banquet. And uh, my vice president and treasurer was recognized as one of the Nine Who Care. And we're very, very pleased that Nicole was granted that. And mm -hmm. uh, she was going, she fit right in with the other eight people who were, well, and, and the things that Nicole does for the nonprofits and for the groups there. Well, yeah. <laughs> She's not a, she doesn't travel like the two out of Monticello do and all they, uh, the two that are going to Washington, a husband and wife that uh, when they retired, he said, I still got like in me, I can still do things. I'm not going to sit around. So they had a camper, and so when they have the floods and they have the bad storms around the country, mostly in the south, southeast, the last year or so, they go down. And they'll spend six, eight weeks, three months, whatever it takes, and they go down and they help rebuild, help clean up, yeah, and work with the rain. Yeah, and so they help get. Yeah. So we have the skills with it, and the wife helps organize uh, programs down there to get people places to live, uh, ways of getting food and necessities. 
and they're very, very good people. And, and uh, they they donated their five hundred dollars to the uh, uh, yeah, Camp Courageous program out there. They're very, very heavily involved with that. Also, have been for years. So we're going to be very well representative this year at the uh, at the event in Washington. Yeah, but I'm very proud of yeah you know, they're down south because of the last storms they had uh, earlier this last month down south with the tornadoes in Texas and Oklahoma that and they had already gone down and they're gonna be down there for six eight weeks so but to see one of our own uh, and the efforts that she puts in not only with the neighborhood association which we're very proud to have her but she does a lot citywide and she's very involved with our community and she loves our community. She really bragged up our playground for us after her recognition uh, thing that she put out. So congratulations to you, Nicole. Thank you. We're very, very happy for you. So, if there's nothing else, me and Jordan, thank you guys for coming tonight and bringing the information for us. It's always important for us. An hour and a half. So, All right. thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you.